Are you an early bird or a night owl? An early bird is someone who gets up very early in the morning. A night owl is someone who enjoys going to bed very late. By nature, I'm a night owl, but ever since I became a mother, I've had to be an early bird. There's a proverb in English, the early bird catches the worm. It means success comes to people who start early and prepare well. Try saying that proverb with me. The early bird catches the worm. Do you find it a little difficult to say words like early, bird, worm? If so, then this is the lesson for you. In the next few lessons, we're going to talk about the R sound. We're going to have three main parts in this lesson. First, we're going to talk about R when it behaves like a vowel sound. Then we'll talk about R when it behaves like a consonant sound. And finally, we're going to look at a challenging combination when R and L are together in the same word. So let's begin. So let's talk about R when it behaves like a vowel sound. We'll start with the basic sound, er. If you know phonetic transcriptions, it looks like that, er. This is the sound that you hear in a word like sir, or in my name, Jennifer. So the er sound can be stressed or unstressed. It's stressed in sir. but it's unstressed in my name, Jennifer. Either way, it behaves like a vowel, and that means that it's a voiced sound. So if you take your hand and place it on your throat and say, er, you should feel vibration. It's a voiced sound from beginning to end. The second thing you need to do is round your lips. Not a lot, but a little. Now let's talk about your tongue. You get to see my great artistic skills. Those are your teeth, your upper and lower teeth. Behind your upper teeth, there is a hard bump. Right there. This is the roof of your mouth. What you need to do first is gently raise the front part of your tongue, the tip, towards that hard bump. Okay, so that's the front part of your tongue. Raise it a little towards the hard bump, but do not touch it. It's very important to know that when you make the er sound, er, the tip of your tongue does not touch the bump or any part of the roof of your mouth. Okay? Now, because the front part of your tongue is raised, it's going to feel like the center of your tongue is going down. Okay? But the back part of your tongue is raised again. It's pulled into a tight ball, and that tight ball is raised towards the back part of the roof of your mouth. Got it? Something like that. Now, another important thing to know is that even though the center feels as if it's going down, the sides of your tongue must be up enough to touch your upper teeth on the sides, here and here. So let me summarize that again. With your tongue, the front part is raised towards the bump, but it doesn't touch. The center feels like it's going down. The sides are raised, and they touch the upper teeth on the sides. They don't push the teeth, they just lightly touch the sides of your upper teeth. The back part of your tongue is raised. It's pulled into a ball and raised towards the roof of your mouth, back here. So I'm going to feel vibration here. I'm going to round my lips, and my tongue will take this position. Er, er. If you do not pull your tongue back into that tight ball, you will not get the correct sound. You'll have something like, er, and that's not correct. 
Let me take that incorrect sound and gradually correct it by pulling it into a tight ball. Uh, so what you're hearing is an incorrect sound that's being slowly corrected because I'm pulling the back part of my tongue into a tight ball. And again, that tight ball is raised towards the roof of my mouth. Uh, got it? When you finish that sound, hold it out. I want you to hold that sound and feel where your tongue is. The front part should still be raised and the sides of your tongue should still have contact with the sides of your upper teeth. Try holding out the sound. Err. Err. Do you feel the teeth? And you should not feel the bump because your tongue is raised but not touching. Err. Err. Alright, let's try this sound in words. Exercise 1. In the following words, the er sound is in a stressed syllable. Note the different spellings. The er sound can be spelled U-R, I-R, E-R. Listen and repeat after me. Turn, hurt, fur, curtain, Thursday, dirt, bird, shirt, first, circle, serve, certain, person, perfect, term. The er sound can also be spelled O-R, O-U-R, E-A-R. Now these first four words might be challenging for some of you, but we'll talk about the W sound and the L sound a bit later, and we'll talk about how it's different from the R sound. For now, do your best and repeat after me. Word work, journalist, journal, earth, heard. Exercise 2. Read each statement and choose the correct answer. Example. Read the statement to yourself and then I'll tell you the answer. In English, we say many people, but one person. The answer is person. 1. In warm weather, what do people put on? Answer. A shirt. 2. Read the statement to yourself first. In English, we say ouch or ow if we are hurt. The answer is hurt. 3. We live on planet Earth. The answer is Earth. 4. Term is a special word. The answer is word. Exercise 3. In these words, the er sound is in an unstressed syllable. For example, this first word is enter. The stress is on the first syllable, not er. Listen closely and repeat after me. Enter. Teacher. Other. Father, faster, motherhood, energy, computer, perhaps, summertime. Now let's move on to phrases and sentences. 
Listen and repeat after me. Enter motherhood. Other energy. Perhaps in summertime. The teacher spoke faster. The father needs a computer.